Greetings and welcome. I am Joffrey, and this is my first deep dive into After the End for CK3. While most of the information I present in these deep dives can be found in the mods dev diaries, there will still be information from elsewhere. Therefore, even those who keep up with the mod may still learn something. The focus of today's deep dive is the most recognizable and arguably most popular religion of After the End, Americanism. The Americanists are a rather self-explanatory lot. You see, Americanists worship, well, America. They give their prayers up to the Founding Fathers and live every moment by the Constitution. Supposedly, they even have an entire copy of the United States Constitution somewhere and endlessly debate on the correct way to interpret each aspect of its instructions. This is where the various Americanist faiths come in to elaborate. Many disagreements exist as to what the correct way to appease providence and achieve the American dream is. However, I must summarize, unless we wish to be here all day. There are four main branches to Americanism, in addition to the libertarians who break conventional Americanist traditions. Now before I force you all to listen to me rant about all five Americanist faiths, I wish to explain the electoral system. A rather curious invention by the dev team, the presidential election is held by every Americanist character on the death of the previous president. Landed or not, regardless of which Americanist faith the character holds, they will all participate. Characters' votes are not simply determined by personal opinion either. Characters may well vote for someone they despise if they are pious or virtuous enough. The president is the rightful successor to the former Empire of America and leader of all the Americanist people. They do not discriminate on their followers based on faith either, as all Americanists represent and follow the president, who reigns for life. As all Americanists respect and follow the president, who reigns for life. Any who do not acknowledge the president are considered heretics, especially any who would dare refuse to hand over the holy city of Washington, D.C. to the new head of faith. Such individuals would surely have lost sight of the American dream. When most people outside of the Americanist lands think about Americanists, they're typically thinking of constitutionalists. Constitutionalists practice strict adherence to the Constitution, that most holy of scriptures written by the divine founders themselves and the words of providence itself. Unless the Constitution is adhered to closely, the American dream will be shattered forever, just as it almost was in the past. They see rigid adherence to precedents to be the only true way to repair America from the brink. The other most popular Americanist faith, though less commonly thought of, due to its unpopularity with the nobility and judiciary, is principalism. Principalism is a rather popular faith among the peasantry due to its flexible approach to the Constitution. The founders may have been divine, however mankind may tarnish the perfect scripture of the Constitution, therefore a less strict adherence to the writing must be taken into account for circumstances, otherwise the principle behind the founders' words will be missed. Imaginarians follow the belief that all goals are achievable by those inspired by the Founding Fathers. While Imaginarians may be conscious of the fact that some goals are simply impossible to achieve, they should be pursued regardless. For the greatness of America is made by the great feats of its people, and true patriots will find a positive side to any failure. Not gonna lie, the zealous optimism of these folks sounds addictive if dangerous. Next are exceptionalists. Firebrand preachers, zealous warriors who spread and defend the faith by the sword for a spark of their own divinity upon death. Their place in the afterlife is second only to that of the founders. For those who defend the Constitution with all their might, surely deserve some of the greatness bestowed upon the founders by providence. Finally, we arrive at the oddballs, libertarianism, a small sect of Americanism. Libertarians do not believe in the divinity of the founders, 
causing their break from the conventional Americanist traditions. Instead, they direct their worship to Lady Liberty, whom they see as the true divine source of Providence's will. Curse their heretical tongues. In spite of this oddity of theirs, other followers of Providence respect them due to their wholesome nature and support for any who work hard for themselves, looking down on those who hoard wealth and stifle the opportunities of the weak. Moving on from Americanism, I shall now discuss the granularity of this new version of After the End. As the After the End team has grown, so too has their ability to have first-hand access to information on the culture and general memory that makes up the current year and history of locations across the Americas. This information has made the team far more capable of accurately covering regions they previously had to paint with a wide brush, so to say. Making full use of in-jokes and making light of things that are considered unusually important in certain regions, such as the upcoming surfer faith in California, the petromancer faith in Alberta and the southern United States, and my personal favorite in the entire mod, the upcoming remembrant faith, located in the Maritimes, northeast of the positively diabolical old god worshippers. While I am not allowed to speak on it much, I will state what is publicly available about the Remembrant. The Remembrant faith is a bastardization of Christianity combined with high levels of importance Canadians, and especially the Maritimes where this faith is located, place on Remembrance Day. Believing that the apocalyptic event that brought mankind to near destruction was a great war. A war to end all, as the Remembrance style it. Christ returned and died for humanity in the war known as the Unknown Savior, saving humanity from their sins once again. His sacrifice must not be forgotten, and bloodshed must be avoided at all cost. Therefore, we must ensure that all our foes learn the truth. After all, how can we ensure the end of conflict if those who disagree with our mournful remembrance remain? Oh, sorry. Got a little lost in my zealotry there. I would love to talk about their sister faith, the history and speculation for the future of their development. However, the Dominion Grand Commander and the Faith's creator, Nova, is watching what I say carefully, and if I reveal anything about her baby that I should not, I may be sent to meet the ancestors sooner than I intend. However, I can still speak to the fact that Remembrance have a staunch tradition of gallant knighthood and worship their ancestors in the most metal way you could imagine. However, I am not convinced I'm allowed to speak on that just yet, but soon, soon, you will see. And on that day, Canada will be reunited, the old empire finally be restored, and conflict shall be ended once and for all. The ancestors will be pleased, and... Uh, oh, oh, there, there, I go again. Thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time.